okay in this video we will talk about the idea behind the boosting algorithm okay and while doing that we will be talking about very deeply about the ada boost algorithm the implementation as well okay so what is the key question which basically triggers the research behind this boosting technique is this one so if i if i just go to the next slide okay so the the main idea behind behind this boosting is can a set of weak learners create a single strong learner okay so there was one research paper by kearns and valiant which published in 1988 to 89 okay which asked this question then uh, the main research behind the boosting techniques happened and and eventually the algorithms like ada ada boost and other boosting algorithm developed okay so here there are two two important thing we need to understand one is this weak learner and another is the strong learner right so so what is weak learner so if i just give you an example let's say i have a bag full of apples and oranges okay and i am creating a classifier which will basically classify which is which fruit is apple and which fruit is orange right so it's if you see it's a binary classification problem right where we have two classes over here apple and orange right now now let's say the classifier is performing something like this one so if i just measure like how much it is predicting correctly so th this this situation arise right so if i just draw the probability line over here where it, here it will be it will be zero that means if it is predicting everything incorrectly so the probability will be zero right and if it is pre predicting everything correctly like whether it is saying that this this guy is apple and this guy in orange for all the samples over here the probability will be 100% over here right and if it is guessing randomly right so that means the what would be the probability over there in that case because we have two classes over here right that means our probability will be 50% chance over there right so the 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 graph will be somewhere over here right 0.5 so this 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 conditions can arrive right and and in between also we can get definitely other other uh, results over here but these are the boundary conditions over here right so now a classifier which is always guessing randomly that means it's probability of guessing is 50% the probability value is the 50% over there so we call it as a random guess or a, a classifier which is randomly guessing something okay now a classifier which is slightly better than the random guess okay suppose it's uh, its error rate should be something over here right so probability of a particular classifier is nothing but its error rate right so how much it is predicting correctly and how much it is predicting incorrectly over there right so a a classifier which is predicting something some better than a random guess we call it as a weak classifier or weak learner okay and and generally when we talk about a good machine learning algorithm or good classifier right so its error rate will be somewhere down to a zero that means it is able to predict values correctly over there right so a strong classifier will be somewhere around here right the error rate will be so this is these are the error rates over here and in, in nothing but if i just mm, give this error rate in terms of mathematical term it's just the probability where my predicted value is not equals to my given value so we we got a fair idea about what is a weak learner or weak classifier and what is a strong learner or strong classifier the initial question was the base question was can i take a set of weak learners okay train them to create a strong learner okay so that was the main idea behind boosting now if i just recap what we did for bagging so we will be able to draw the difference between these two algorithms so now in bagging what we did basically this this was our sample right and we were basically creating the bootstrap sample from this sample right and then we are basically parallelly training all those similar kind of algorithms over here right and then we were taking the majority vote over here right so that is that is the, that was the main concept behind the bagging in boosting and specifically we will talk about ada boost now because when the initial paper of boosting uh, was published and eventually they created ada boost as well because the initial boosting algorithms was having some 
limitations okay so mainly we'll start with beta boosts and while doing that definitely we will understand how boosting works as well okay so ada boost is a machine learning algorithm which basically work really good for binary classification problems it also works for multi class classification problem as well but there are certain things we need to understand over here but in today's lecture we will just try to consider on the binary problems over here okay now now let's say i i have in in ada boost basically what we do is just like normal bagging algorithm there are a lot of samples we create using boosting right so here we basically follow a lot of iterations okay that means in bagging we were training our classifiers and in parallel right in in boosting what we do is we basically train our classifier in sequentially okay so let let me let me show you how it works over here let's say first iteration okay that means in the first process what will happen let's say we have a couple of samples over here okay in our two dimensional space we can just map it to a some plus or minus over here okay because we are talking about a binary class problem right so there are samples with which are marked as plus there are samples which are marked as minus over here right now let's say initially we will develop a classifier which is will will take a weak learner or weak classifier which we will eventually make it as a strong classifier right so now think about over here right our weak classifier can be anything because over here in in classification problem what we do basically we create a boundary over here right so that in both of this both side of this boundary we basically say if the data points are this side of the boundary we will we will predict something otherwise we will predict something else over there right now here we can we can draw multiple lines over here as as per our convenience right now not all the lines will add some more values because if you see if i if i just draw a line over here and say the left of this line is all are plus and right of this line are all are minus over here now now if you see if i if i can draw another line after just this red minus over here it will not add any value because we are basically taking the weak algorithm further right which is which is basically it will be more weak right so in those cases generally what we do is like we try to take a weak algorithm which basically makes sense that means which perform slightly better than the random guess over here so let's say in iteration 1 okay which i i will just mention it as h1 because in machine learning generally the output of of any particular algorithm we call it hypothesis right using that we we predict something over there right so let's say in first iteration our hypothesis is an h1 which is nothing but the weak learning algorithm over here or weak learner over here okay which able to draw this particular line over here right so whatever the whatever coming at left of this line are all we will be classify as plus otherwise will classify as minus over here okay now now see it over here when i did this one so there are three things this this plus this plus and this plus which this particular algorithm this h1 will be classifying wrongly over here right rest of the stuff it will it will it will perfectly do correctly the classification but for these three guys it will do wrongly over here right so what we will do is in the next process okay we will increase their weights so that's why the concept of weights are coming over here okay so when initially we will train this particular h1 with this data right we'll assign some weights over here to for for all this samples over here and initially we will assign equal weights okay now when we can see this particular algorithm is classified is classifying something wrong we will increase their weights okay and we'll decrease the other 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 guys weights over here so that in the next process or in the next iteration the classifier will concentrate more on this one to learn from this guys okay and then try to predict something so that means in the next process what will happen is in the iteration number 2 so we will feed this weighted data right with increased weight of these three guys and decreased weight of these guys will feed to another 
classifier and basically we talk about similar kind of classifier over here okay the sing similar classifier only learning this stuff over here okay and we will train it again okay so let's say this time it is able to draw this line over here whatever coming right side of this line will be classifying as minus or otherwise we'll classify it as a plus right now if you see it over here it is able to learn to classify all the plus points over here right but this three guys again it is misclassifying right so this guy this guy and this guy over here right so again it is misclassifying so what we'll do again in before we go to next iteration we will increase their weights again right and we will feed it to the next iteration over here similar classifier okay so if i when we will go to next iteration iteration number three so we we will train h3 with this weighted data again okay so now let's say this time it is able to draw this line over here whatever coming up of this line will be classifying as plus otherwise will classify as minus over here okay now if you see again it is it is not able to classify this plus this plus and this minus over here properly right and if you see what what essentially we are doing it over here in each and every iteration the classifier is learning from different parts it basically fixing the different parts of its training data right so basically it is fixing its error in each and every iterations over here right we can continue till till the point where we we can we, we either we will be assured that we do not need a further further classification again or we can at least start with this many iterations we need and then we will stop over there okay so we we basically what we did it over here is we we train the classifiers sequentially over here right and while doing that we created three three versions of it right h1 h2 and h3 over here right now the job is to aggregation right just like other ensemble techniques the ultimate job is to aggregate them to take the final decision right so let's let's go to next slide so in the aggregation process what will happen if you see it over here i just draw the same sample space over here and all these three classifiers over here right now if i just aggregate all of them if you see i can create a boundary something like this one right where in this grade region whatever is coming up it will classify it as plus otherwise it will classify as minus over here okay if you see while if i combine it it all makes sense over here right and there is another concept while we combining it we'll also add another weight over here to this to these guys over here so that maybe this is the this is a very ideal scenario it may happen that after combining also it may not are able to classify 100% okay but boosting algorithm generally have a good convergence now now if you see like what what do we why do we assign this weights over here right now intuitively if you just see let's say in in a closed room we are solving a problem like like this like this coronavirus right with with lot of expert from different fields over here right now the boosting technique is similar right so each and every expert is basically contributing to their own subject matter right and at the end of the day what we are doing we are aggregating all of them to reach to a final solution over there right and while doing that we will basically take we also we also wait those experts as well we add weight to those expert as well so that the expert which whose coverage to the problem is more maybe we will give more weight or otherwise we will give less weight over there we can, maybe we can think of in those those scenarios over there right so that's that's why we need a weight over here to to those classifiers so that the final decision could would be a weighted decision weighted, weighted average decision over here okay now I, I said about average, but if you talk about classification scenario, it will be the weighted major major measuring vote over there, right? Now, as I that's why I, I written over here, alpha t is the measures that the importance that is assigned to H T over here, right? Now let us try to see mathematically how this algorithm works. Then only maybe we will be able to appreciate the work behind this one. Okay, so let us do the math. Then then we'll see that one. 
Now for that, uh, what I did is I have just taken the screenshot of those three iterations over here, right? Just we discussed few minutes back, right? So that while discussing the math, we can we can see what's going on over here as well. Okay. Now now let's say we we have we have m training samples. Okay. So we have m training samples. So if I just write it down, like it will be like something like x1 comma y1. Then it, it, I'm just writing the each and every samples over here. x2 comma y2 and xm comma ym, right? xm comma ym, right? So so where this this x r belongs to our features right it can be a vector as well but in normal scenario it can be a single feature as well over here right so that means our x i's where our x i's belongs to belongs to let's say some some sample space let's say x over there okay and for simplicity we will we will take our y i belongs to plus one and minus one what, what whatever the problem we discussed over here right now if you see like this this y belongs to plus one and minus one right you can convert any kind of binary classification problem to that one right now suppose let's say if you see a few few minutes back i was giving an example of apple and oranges right so if it is an if it is an apple i can predict plus one if it is an orange i can predict minus one right so those kind of feature engineering engineering you can do anyway right so so let's say our y i it belongs to uh, it belongs to only plus one and minus one. Okay, so that that will be our s space for for our yi. So with this assumptions and with this configurations, let's try to see how different iterations in 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 each each and every iterations what is happening inside. Okay, now let's let's say we have total t iterations. Okay, we we will have total capital T iterations. After that, we will stop, okay? So if I just mark or uh, the variable for each and every iteration as small t, so that value of t will be from one till t, right? T, right? Now in add a boost, the first thing we did is like we assign weights to each and every sample over here right so now this is the this is the important stuff over here so let us go down a bit over here so the first step is assign weights right assign weights over here now here a couple of things we have to remember now in add a boost the weights are always follow a distribution that means their sum will be always will be equals to one okay so if i just write for each and every sample the weight as the weight as d okay and I'll give a subscript called T because each and every iteration we are basically changing our weights over there, right? And I'll give a things called I over here, right? That means this is the weight of the ith sample in iteration number T over here, okay? So if I just if I just use this particular notation, then what I am saying is for Adaboost, the weights will always follow a distribution. That means they are some their sum will be always equals to one right so it will be always equals to one so now sum means it will be our from i equals to one sorry equals to one till m right for all our samples if i just take the weights the sum will be one okay so this is this is called a distribution distribution that's why maybe i'm uh, i'm using this this particular uh, letter d okay I, i'll be sharing that research paper as well uh, I'll, in my in my github link maybe i'll encourage you to go through that one as well okay so here where my i is my 
ith sample, right? ith sample, ith sample over here, and and t you already know it's the iteration number over here, right? So for iteration number one, as I said over here, we'll be assigning equal weights for all the samples over here, right? So what will be the weight value over here? So if I just calculate it over here, so the d value for iteration number one for each and every sample will be what? It will be one by m, right? So that means it will be one over m right so in our case we have how many samples we have one two three four five and then five ten samples that means it will be one over ten for our case right so this is what the weight values will be in iteration number one we'll starting it right so now we will try to train that particular model we'll basically try to formalize the hypothesis h1 over here right by by training this h1 using this this samples over here right with with equal weights for all the all the samples so in step number two what we are doing we are training the weak learner the weak learner with samples using weights this our dti right so each and every iteration we will be using a modified version of the weight right we will start we'll be starting with this one but each and every iteration will be modifying that's weight and we'll be training that weak learner over there right so that will be our step number two over here right now let's say after training we got our first weak hypothesis over here right so first hypothesis ht or ht because if you if you see it over here for each and every iteration i am using h subscript one that means the iteration number over here right so you are basically getting a hypothesis ht which is nothing but our model over here right we will be input some x over there it will predict either plus one or minus one because here our prediction space is only this these two guys over here right so we we get the weak hypothesis weak hypothesis h t okay so which basically will map to our x that means which will basically if we just send some x values over here it will it will return either plus one or minus one right so that is what it will do now what will be the error rate of this particular hypothesis right because that is more important over here because i need to know how how this particular hypothesis is performing right maybe based on that i need to basically add more weights to the errored outputs right right over there that means the sample for which the hypothesis is predicting wrongly i have to add more weightage over there right so this is how we'll be defining the error rate over here okay so we'll say error rate we'll call it as epsilon okay epsilon and because error rate will be different for each and every iteration right each and every hypothesis of those iterations so i'll give iteration number over here as well epsilon t it will be the probability i am writing pr for probability over here okay where our output right so what will be our output so if i just give an uh, input xi to this ht right so that means ht and i am giving an input over here xi right so that is what this guy is also telling it over here so this is another way of writing this one right i am giving an input xi to this ht and which is and it will produce an output yi right and it will produce an output right and now that will match with the yi over here right this y i is over here each and every y value is over here and see whether they are matching or not if they are not matching so i will take those values and can calculate the probabilities over here right so that means where this not equals to y i right so that will be our error rate over here now if i just talk about in very simplistic term over here 
for the iteration number one I had total 10 samples right now this guy h1 it was able to classify all the points correctly except these three points over here right so that means the total what will be our error rate over here it will be 3 over 10 right so that will be the probability values over here right probability of where our hypothesis value is not matching with the actual value divided by the total number of samples we have it over here right so th that is what we are we are calculating over here right so it will be something about 3 over 10 right so 3 over 10 now I written this one because if I just see it over here right so this 3 over 10 that means 10 10 is our m value over here right because our our we have total total m samples over here 10 samples over here right so 3 over 10 means the value of the weights where our hypothesis is our hypothesis output is not matching our actual values over here right that means I can write something like this one summation okay where my h of t x i is not equals to y i okay here and what I will add I will add this weights over here right d t i right so that means i am adding those weights where my hypothesis is hypothesis output is not matching our actual output that's all right so that's why i just draw this three by train so that we can understand what's going on over here okay so this is our error rate so if you see it over here error rate i can compute in terms of weights as well over here but there is a condition that this this guy right now as it is a probability value right so that means it will maximum value will be 1 over here the probability if all if this particular HT is able to classify all the points all the samples correctly right so so what will be the value of 1 minus epsilon t right so this will be this basically this is the success rate if I just talk about error rate as ET 1 minus epsilon t will be the success rate right this will be like nothing but this summation of these guys where h of xi equals to yi right so if I just copy this guy over here okay and just change this guy to equals to so this will be our condition for 1 minus et over here right so this will be needed in latter part so i just that's why i computed it okay so this is nothing but our success rate over here now after we got our hypothesis right now if you remember from my slide what we did the, when we are doing the final aggregation is we were assigning a weights to this hypothesis as well right so we are basically assigned a value of alpha 1 alpha 2 for different different hypothesis over here right so we need to compute alpha over here right so that means under step number 4 we'll do is compute compute alpha t alpha t because each and every iteration you, we will be producing a separate separate hypothesis right so for them we will having will have the separate separate weights as well right over there alpha t values over here okay now the the formula for calculating the alpha t is something like below okay so I will not just going to prove that one but we will try to see it intuitively why it makes sense okay so let me write the formula over here okay alpha t it will be one half one half okay then ln okay logarithm of base e then it will be success rate or one minus epsilon t and divided by epsilon t okay so this is how alpha t is defined over here okay now intuitively alpha t means the importance we are giving to ht right so that means for each and every iteration the the model we are getting it right so the the learner we are getting it over there now 
let let me draw a graph of of this function over here okay we will we will see why we are using this 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 kind of formula over here okay so if i just draw a graph let's say i'll just say we have half over here right so 0 0.5 into l n of a 1 minus x ln fraction 1 o 1 minus x over x right so this is the graph i wanted to draw over here now let me zoom it a bit over here maybe this 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 should be sufficient enough right so if i just add it over here okay now one interesting thing about this particular graph right so as as i said alpha t is the importance we are giving it right so that means giving to the ht right suppose a particular ht that means for each and every iteration whatever the model we are getting it over here it is doing the prediction perfectly okay that means the more and more it will be going to the strong strong classifier level so that means your its error rate will be down right close to zero right so whenever our error rate is basically in our x axis we have our error rates right and in our y axis we have alpha t over here right whenever our error rate is closer to closer to zero if you see alpha t is going very up high right that means the the importance to that model will be higher compared to the other models right now if you see at the at this point where it is 0 0.5 right that means our model or our ht is basically doing a random guess over here right that's why our error will be somewhere around 0 0.5 over here as, as i discussed in my first slide over there right so in this in this point the the alpha t value will be zero over here right that means that particular ht will not get any importance over there right now if you see the ht if it is predicting wrong for most of the samples over here right it is error is going going on the right side over here towards one right the time the alpha t value is going towards negative over here right so that's the intuition behind behind this guy over here okay and intuitively we can see this this formula makes sense over here right so we will go ahead with this one now this guy over here if you see it this is called the learning rate okay so we calculated the alpha t now what will be our next step so we we got the alpha t for for that ht now before we move to the next iteration we have to update the weights right with with some values so that the miscalculated or misclassified samples will get better weightage over there right so that means we need to calculate the weights for the next iteration right so this will be our next bigger step right so calculate calculate the weights for for next iteration next iteration or basically update the weights update update of weights right so here also we will try to use a formula but we will try to understand intuitively why it makes sense okay so the weight for the next iteration that means d iteration number t plus t plus 1 that means next iteration i okay will be so let me write the formula first then we will try to see it okay so it will be fraction weight of that current iteration i right so the, this is the weight of the current iteration divided by a normalization factor okay i w i will explain why this normalization factor is needed over here okay so before that let me write that formula over here multiply by let me go up a bit over here so multiply by here we have to we have a two situation over here right so those samples where we are classifying correctly we have to decrease their weights and those samples where we are incorrectly classifying we have to increase their weights over here right so we will multiply by a factor called e to the power e to the power alpha t okay 
e to the power alpha t sorry it will be alpha t that means the preference value of that the one we calculated over here right so we'll be multiplying by e to the power alpha t when we are basically not agreeing our our hypothesis output is not agreeing with our actual output over here right so that means for for our i'll just copy this one over here hti xi is not equals to yi right correct and we will multiply by e to the power minus alpha t so i'll just copy this full guy again okay to save time so it will be e to the power minus alpha t when it will be equal right so that that's the main difference the the that multiplication factor will be different over here because e to the power minus alpha t will be definitely lesser than e to the power alpha t over here right so for for the samples where it is not matching the output is not matching over here right that means we are misclassifying we are basically increasing their weights and here we are decreasing the weights over here right now we can we can write basically this this two stuff together as well so let me let me try to show you that one okay so that means our dt plus i t plus 1 i will be so if i just copy this one okay then on the numerator i am i am writing something like this one okay so i'll say e to the power minus alpha t i'll just copy this one over here okay e to the power minus alpha t into yi and then htxi okay where htxi is our each and every output of that hypothesis for each and every sample and yi yi is the actual output now now if i if i just see why this particular formula makes sense is over here okay now let us try to try to reason through it okay now let's say so at the at the end of the day what we are trying to see it over here is this guy we are multiplying with either e to the power minus alpha t or e to the power plus alpha t right now when these two guys are not agreeing with each other right and our yi belongs to either plus 1 and minus 1 which we already saw it over here right so so if you see then if the hypothesis output will be plus 1 then the yy will be minus 1 because they are not agreeing over here right so the their multiplication end result will be minus 1 that's why this minus 1 before alpha t will make them as a plus right so that means we will be multiplying with e to the power alpha t over here now what will happen when we are agreeing with each other that means the value of htxi and yy will be same in that case let's say both are minus 1 right so they they will become always become either plus 1 into plus 1 will be plus 1 minus 1 into minus 1 will be always plus 1 as well right so that means that time will be this this minus will we will be as is that means that time we will be multiplying with e to the power minus alpha t in those cases right so so we get a idea about what we need to do for to calculate the weight for the next iteration but there was one factor called zt over here which we still not focused into but let us discuss that one okay now the idea behind introducing this zt is this guy if you remember when we started our working on this one right we said that the weights in adabust always follow a distribution that means at any iteration if you add those weights it will be always one okay so we need to when we increase or decrease weight right we need to consider those that that particular thing in our mind as well right so that means those after increasing and decreasing also this weights needs to add up to one right so that's why this no zt has been introduced to this will act as a normalization factor okay we will see now how to derive the value of zt for each and every iterations over here okay now before that let let us try to compute the value of e to the power alpha t or minus alpha t what will be the value of these two guys over here right then it will be it will, it will all make sense now to compute this guy we will start with this formula over here right so i'll just copy this guy over here okay so we'll say alpha t is equals to this one right so that means 
if i just say alpha alpha t equals to if i just keep this ln over here right if i keep ln over here so this will become ln of square root of this guy right so ln of square root of this whole guy because this half will go to the power of this guy right so that that means we are talking about this one over here right now what will be the if i just solve this logarithm over here so what will be the value of e to the power alpha t over here so it will be e to the power alpha t so it will be the value of this guy over here right correct because we are just solving the logarithm over here so this is the value of e to the power alpha t and what will be the value of e to the power minus alpha t so we just need to flip this particular fraction right so it will be e to the power i'll just copy this whole stuff over here so e to the power minus alpha t will be so epsilon t over 1 minus epsilon t right so this will be the value of e to the power minus alpha t right so if i just write this whole expression now i'll just copy it over here okay in terms of epsilon t so here we are we are multiplying with e to the power minus alpha t right that means we are essentially multiplying with this guy over here right where our h t x i is equals to y i and here we are multiplying with e to the power alpha t right so that means we are essentially multiplying with this guy over here right where h t x i is not equals to y i right now let us try to see if we can calculate z t over here right now if you see it over here this is the weight value for a particular sample right because it is the ith sample right so if we just take a summation for all the samples we will be getting the weight value summation for all the samples right but over here we need to remember is not everywhere the weight values will be same right so that means for the samples where it is we are classifying correctly the weight values if i just take the sum so it will be summation okay the weight values will be this guy this guy into this one right this guy into this one so we'll just try to write something like this one we'll say in summation where our we are class classifying correctly over here right so this is the weight summation weight for those samples where we are classifying correctly plus plus we have to sum the weight for the samples while we are classifying incorrectly over there right so that means i'll copy again this guy over here first we'll write a sum okay of this one into this one okay where our classifier is incorrectly classifying right so that means here so this is the sum of all the weights we have we are having right for the next iteration which must be must be equals to 1 right so this is this is what our main point over here as well when we started initially right so we said like it has to follow a distribution over here right so we we just write the same stuff over here as well now this zt and this guy can come out from both of this places over here okay so let's do that one and if you see in both of this place the zt will be the denominator over here right so zt can come right side as well so if i can write something like this one over here right so if i say this one okay into of this whole stuff without zt now okay so zt i will move it to right side of this equation so i'll just move over here so i'll just copy this guy over here okay plus again this guy this guy into 
I'll just copy till this summation okay and I'll just copy this guy over here okay and if I just move ZT right side it will be Z subscript T over here right normal algebra stuff now one interesting thing happens over here okay so let us let us try to see if we can if we can see that one what is this guy over here right so if I just go up a bit so we are basically talking about the sum of weight values while we are classifying correctly right so it's familiar of and basically it's same with this expression over here right which is nothing but 1 minus epsilon t right so we will directly replace that so we'll write it down something like this guy over here then we will copy the 1 minus epsilon t over here right copy this one so let me put a bracket over here so that we will not get confused right okay so this is the this one and if I just put the plus now what about this one summation of weights where our hypothesis output is not matching with yi actual output so this is nothing but this expression over here which is nothing but our epsilon t over here right so we will replace that one so we'll say this guy into epsilon t correct so it's nothing but this is equals to our zt zt right now if i just do the normal math over here so he the value of this expression will be square root of epsilon t and into 1 minus epsilon t because if I just calculate the square root over here right compute the square root over here so that means it will be epsilon t epsilon t into 1 minus epsilon t right correct now now the v if I if I just solve this guy as well it will be the same value you've already had if you if you see it right so I'll just copy this one right so it will be Z T over here right now it is coming up a good expression over here so that means our value of Z T will be 2 into this guy over here right so this will be our value of Z T so now if we just put this Z value into our main equation over here okay so let us let us see what what is happening over here okay so if I just copy this guy okay and paste it over here okay paste it over here so we are basically saying our dt dt plus 1 i that means wait for the next iteration for a particular sample i will be dti over so if i just do the fraction over here the numerator will be this one right dti dti and the denominator will be z over t right now when ht xi equals to yi right and and ht xi not equals to yi the multiplication factor will be different but zt value will be same right which is nothing but this one we found it over here right so we'll do that one okay now here we will be writing the multiplication factor one by one so that means i'll just copy this one okay so here so when this guy is happening so this will be our new dt plus one value right otherwise what will be our if I just copy this one here go okay for this case only the multiplication factor will be changing it over here right okay so this will be our values over here now if I just solve this this equation over here we will we'll see an important property over here okay so let us try to do that one so the value of this guy the value of t plus 1i in this particular scenario will be 
so it will be fraction this one will not change okay so this one will write it over here now if i just solve this guy over here so this root over epsilon t will will cut out right and and this root over 1 minus epsilon t will multiply with root over 1 minus epsilon t which will become 1 minus epsilon t that means the numerator will be 1 over 2 denominator will be 2 into 1 minus epsilon epsilon t right so this will be the value into our this dti what we had it before right so this will be the value for this this is important when this scenario is occurring right now when we have this scenario that means we are not classifying correctly so what will be the value of dt plus 1 i so if i just do the similar calculation over here okay so it will be 1 over 2 into and if you see it over here it will be the epsilon t right epsilon t right into our dti as as we had it before right dti over here and scenario is important where we are not classifying correctly over here right so we got this two expression over here right now if i if i just do the summation over where we are classifying correctly the weights and and not classifying like to the weights just just we did before right so let's see what what is happening over there okay so it will be our summation of these guys right dti's where our ht xi will be yi right so that means i will just mention this one it will be what it will be this particular expression this is this will come out of the summation and then we will have summation of this guy correct of this guy of dti right i just took out this guy over here now this is what this is again if we just go up over here right when we have we did it over here right so for for this case where we are classifying correctly the summation of weights are nothing but 1 minus epsilon t that means the a success rate over there right so we can directly replace that over here so we will write something like this one so we will say this one equals to this guy will be will stay as is and this guy we can replace directly replace with 1 minus epsilon t over here right so into 1 minus epsilon t now this to cut out that means this will become one half over here right so this is something interesting so we got half the value of the weights for any iteration right because this is t plus 1 right where we are classifying correctly will be one half and now let us do the same stuff while we are not classifying correctly over here right so we will say for this guy over here so it will we will say sum summation of dt plus 1 i right because we are talking about this one where htx not equals xi not equals to yi right so we'll mention that condition over here okay so what will be the value because this guy value will be summation of these guys now this guy can come out so that means i can directly write it over here now i can write this summation summation of dti the same way we did it over there right so so if i just try to find the formula over here this is nothing but our error rate right so if i if i just go up over here so this is nothing but our error rate over here so we can directly replace with ampers epsilon t over here right so that means it will be nothing but this summation value will be this will be as is into epsilon t epsilon t right now this will also cut out that means the value will be one half 
right so this is an interesting interesting output over here where the summation of the sample summation of the weights of the sample where we are correctly classifying incorrectly classifying at any stage that any any iteration will be always be half as well so that means when we we calculate the weights right so that means we do not need to depends on anything else over here right we'll just scale up or scale down right it will it will it will and and so that the summation will be always be half over here right and if you see it like this is also abiding the rule where our overall summation of the weights has to be one over here so that it will follow a distribution over here right so this is an interesting proposition we can we can see it over here and 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 if you see th this this makes the internal algorithm very simplistic right okay so with all this knowledge we 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 basically now what will happen so our previous step was the this was the longest step i think we we had is step 5 where we calculated the weight for the next iteration right after and and we have seen it over here in generalized way what will be the z value of the normalization factor for each and every iterations and what will be the weight value for each and every iterations as well over here right and and we also saw like the summation of weight values will also follow this this rule where where we are classifying correctly it will add up to half even for incorrect classification it will add up to half as well right so now with all these things now we 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 reach a position where we have all the hypotheses right h1 h2 h3 h4 ht then we will add them up right to make the final prediction over here right so that means our final hypothesis hypothesis let me go go up a bit over here we'll mark it as capital hx okay which will be nothing but our summation summation f what what will take the sum from t equals to 1 the sorry t equals to 1 that means iteration number 1 till our t iterations as you remember we have total we had total t iterations over there right and what will basically sum will sum alpha t for each and every iteration the alpha values of that particular hypothesis then h t and then x right so this one and we will take the sign as well because there is a plus one and minus one right and you have to take the sign over here right sign of this one right so this will be our final hypothesis over here right where we have we are taking the basically the weighted output over there right so hopefully i did not bore you because this is this is always fun math is math is really a fun and and i believe like if you st want to study machine learning the if you understand the math underlying math behind it it will be easier when you will be implementing in in real life scenarios over there okay now the same concept can be extended to multi class classification as well if if i get, if i able to set it up maybe i'll definitely cover that one as well okay so for now we i'll be stopping it over here we'll see in next video okay